Hey guys, Crewman here, and this is a pretty big build for me. This is going to be my first all MSI build, and I want to give a big shout out to MSI for sending me about half the parts for this. They sent me the Velux MPG 300R white case. They sent me the MPG X870E Edge TI Wi-Fi motherboard, AM5 socket. They sent me this MPG A850GS 850 watt power supply. And then they did send me a Core Liquid i360 Black AIO. I told them I was going to do a full white PC build. So they resent me the Core Liquid 360 AIO, but in white. So I'm pretty happy about that. So massive shout out to MSI for sending me all of these products. Now for the rest of the build, I decided that I wanted to continue the all white theme. So I went with a white Ventus 2X RTX 5070. I was pretty happy with that one. Now I wanted to make this build have a lot of airflow and I wanted to kind of highlight the Velox 300R because one of the things that I like about it is it's got those two big fans in the front and MSI claims that because they're double bladed they'll help improve airflow a little bit so I figured let's put it to the test and we'll use a twin fan 5070 as I wanted a little bit of a smaller profile. I decided I didn't want to use a three fan for this case as I kind of wanted this build to represent like a uh, high end build, but on the mid tier scale of the high end. So what we paired it with, as far as CPUs go, is an oldie but a goodie, last generation's Ryzen 7 7800X3D. Now if you've seen my testing from my old Crewman Tech channel, I'll have a link down below, you'll know that the 7800X3D performs almost identical to the 9800X3D in 1440p, which is the target resolution for this build. We went with Delta T4 DDR5 RAM, 32 gigs with 60, with 6,000 mega transfers, which is what you need in RAM. And we got white DDR5 RAM because we're continuing the all white theme. As far as the drives, we went with the simple team group, 512 gig SSD. And then we went with a two terabyte PCIe Gen 4 NVMe for the games. The idea is that the OS goes on this simple drive and all the games go on the higher end Gen 4 NVMe. So I'm pretty excited for this build. I think it's going to look great. This is actually the first time I've done a pure all white build. As you know, my dream gaming PC, I could not acquire a white 5090, and if any brands are listening, I'm always open for collaboration for a white 5090. <laughs> so, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get this built. I'm really excited for this one. I think this will. I think this one will showcase the MSI MPG and the MAG lines. And I'm really excited to pair it with their Ventress twin fan. I talked about this one at CES, where I was amazed how small it was. And I'm really, really excited to put it through its paces. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get this built. Let's see how easy this case really is to build in. Let's get to it right now.
Okay, so here we have Marvel Rivals. This is my new favorite esports game. Favorite's a loose word. I have a love-hate relationship with this game. Now, this is one of the few games I actually prefer to run with DLSS on because it's, you know, it's cell shaded. So I have DLSS on quality, high settings, and you can see we're getting about 120 FPS average with 71 to 80 at 1 FPS on the lows. So it's all it's pretty good and I think this is very playable and offers a very smooth experience. So I'm pretty proud of how the RTX 5070s handling it. The next thing we're going to go to is Cyberpunk 2077. I have Creepman Tech covering the averages because they're not they never work right on Cyberpunk. I'm running the same settings I always run in 1440p, uh, medium ray tracing, high everything else, crowd density on high and I'm not quite getting 60 FPS, but I'm getting pretty close. And this is a very, very playable experience. I think with Cyberpunk, uh, I prefer graphics first because it's one of those games similar to Helldivers where high FPS or a low FPS doesn't necessarily mean you have an unplayable experience. And I also want to note that this is a very demanding game, that it is summer where I live and my gaming testing area is very hot. So this piece, this CP or GPU is running at 75C when it probably would be running at about 65C in you know a different season. So now that you saw me talk about the parts I used, you saw me build the PC and you saw me test a few games, let me talk about my experience building inside of 
MSI's MPG Velox 300R Airflow PZ case. Now, I want to say that the thing I liked the most about it was that if you see right over here, the power supply shroud can be removed. That made building in this PC way easier. That's something that I wish more brands followed through on. Basically, it allows you just to kind of uh, drop the power supply in and not worry about trying to shove your arms in the bottom of the case and plug everything in. So that was very nice. I also liked the MPG uh, A850GS power supply. I liked the yellow adapters on the on the 12 volt high power cables. It's great to make sure that your adapter's plugged in and it's just something else that gives you peace of mind. So that was really nice. Also, in the back of this case, there was a ton of room to build in, so that was very nice. You know, I didn't feel constrained at all. And if I were to use a larger GPU, like say a four, like a 5080 or a 5090 in this thing, I wouldn't have any issues at all. Now, I know you saw me kind of struggle installing the AIO. That had nothing to do with the AIO itself, more that I was just trying to hold it with one hand and screw it in with another. I don't know if I'd recommend that, but I honestly am pretty new to installing AIOs and I don't really know an easier way to do it. But other than that, the final thing I want to talk about is the motherboard. The, the MPG X870 Edge Ti was a pleasure to build in. The thing I really, really, really liked about it was that there were no screws for the M.2s. Basically just drop them in, push them in, you know, made sure they were tight, and that was it. I actually did a double take when I first set it up. The reason I put the M.2 SSD and the M.2 NVMe drives where I put them is so that I don't interfere with the PCIe lanes on the 5070. A lot of X870 motherboards, basically every manufacturer, you have to look at the manual because if you populate too many of those slots or you populate the wrong slot, you'll suddenly take your GPU from 16x on the PCIe lane to an 8x, which is like a 2 or 3% FPS loss, but it's still an FPS loss. And when you're spending as much money as you are on your PC, you certainly don't want to have any performance issues that can be avoided. Now, as far as cost goes, this whole build would run about 2100, 21 to 2200. Now, I know that's not exactly cheap, but when you consider it is an all white build with brand new parts, high end parts as well, uh, you know, the 7800X 3D is a very high end CPU, and the 5070 is highest end on the mid range stack in terms of, C of GPUs, in my opinion. This build is very reasonably costed if white reasonably costed PCs were actually a thing. So overall, I'm very, very happy with this build and I highly, highly recommend the all white build to anybody who's interested. And the MSI parts were a breeze to build with. You know, I know I am sponsored by MSI, so of course there's a little bias there, but this PC was, a, was probably the most fun I've had building PCs in quite a while. It was a very easy PC to build, and the only difficulties were in me thinking that I could somehow install an AIO one-handed. So that's it for this one. Thank you again to MSI for sponsoring this video, and I will have links to all the parts down below. There'll be affiliate links so you can, you know, help my channel. Please like and subscribe to see more builds like this. We've got a lot of great content coming up. And I've got a new video series that I think you guys are going to love. So that's it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. Peace out.